let's 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 start scripting. Um, what I'd like you to do is create a new instrument track, and you don't want there to be any parts. This should just be a single software instrument track. Uh, let's get rid of this and copy time. And the script that we're going to be making is something that actually none of the MIDI effects um, allow you to do, and which I think is is kind of useful. You know, especially for those of us who work with orchestral samples, um, we're very used to recording one part at a time. You know, if it's a bass part, you've got a bass patch up on your keyboard and all you're doing is playing bass. And, oh, you know what? I think, one second, I think we've lost the, uh, yeah, I think we've lost the logic window. Hopefully that's brought it back. Um, you know, we're playing one part at a time. Whatever happened to the idea of being able to maybe play two parts at a time? Right. Okay. That that is that is correct. Uh, the the file has GUI controls. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, so this script that we're going to do is going to allow you to create a split keyboard and play two sounds at once. And in the process of coding this, I think it will be very instructive uh, showing you how the JavaScript, uh, how the JavaScript works and the kinds of modifications you can make to the MIDI data. So the very first thing um, you should do after creating a new software instrument channel is load up, it doesn't matter, it's your choice, uh, some sort of a plugin that will let you load up a, a, a multi timbre setup like, like Contact or or play or Omnisphere, as long as you can load up two sounds on two different MIDI channels, it doesn't matter um, what plugin you choose. I'm going to just keep things simple. I'm going to load up a cello and I'm also going to load up a harp. And as you can see here, the, um, the cello is on channel one and the harp is on channel two. And we can just sort of put that off to the side for a minute. Um, the next thing to do is to go to the MIDI effects section and load up a scripter. And from the scripters settings menu, go to the factory uh, menu and then go down to uh, Tutorial Scripts and load up the one called Simple Pass-Through. And you're not going to see any controls, but when you open up the uh, script by clicking the Open Script in Editor button, you're going to see basically an explanation of what I've already um, said about the, the purpose of this this handle MIDI function. Uh, now with JavaScript, there's no reason to have to constantly type the same things over and over again when you're writing new scripts. There's no reason whatsoever that you shouldn't just start out with this one and you know modify it accordingly. So another thing I just want to briefly mention here is that if you see this first line, it's it starts with two slashes, and that's um, that's an indication that everything after those slashes is a comment. It's an inline comment. Um, if I was to get rid of those slashes, you can see that uh, almost immediately the scripter highlights that text in red because it doesn't recognize it as code. Two slashes, oops, two slashes let you add comments to your code. And it's a really important thing for, and, and as you can see here, you can you can start those two slashes anywhere and then write stuff after it. When you're just getting into JavaScript, it's a really good idea to annotate your code with comments. Uh, it's very easy to get lost. Ah, 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 yes, I'll zoom in for sure. We have the technology. Okay. 
All right. Hopefully that's at least as big as, as it was before. Now I'm going to go away for now so we can just focus on the screen. Uh, in, oh, come on, come on. There we go. All right. So yeah, inline comments, uh, just type two slashes and then you can write stuff after it. Another kind of uh, markup that's in here is this block comment. Uh, it starts with a slash and an asterisk and it ends with an asterisk and a slash. And this is a way of, you know, writing notes or instructions where you, you know, don't have to start every single line with two, you know, it saves you from having to do that. So block comments are slash asterisk, write stuff, and then asterisk slash. And if we get rid of this, again, this is this, um, this factory preset tutorial, uh, Oh, you probably can't see it, you know, because the screen is blown up. But, you know, this is this is just the factory um, template for not template a file for getting you the handle MIDI uh, function. And you can also see that it already comes preset with this send event or event dot send uh, action or method, as it's called. If you wanted to add the trace function so that you can use this as a MIDI monitor, you would just type event.trace and again if you read it backwards um, that's the best way to understand it trace and the, you can think of the dot as meaning this so send this event trace this event and these functions have to be uh, followed by a set of empty parentheses and a semicolon a semicolon is like the period at, at the end of a sentence if you leave them out it's not going to hurt anything most of the time, but it's it's just not considered good practice to omit them. So this code will actually work. See if I click run script. Script evaluated successfully, but it's just not good practice to leave them out. 